Hey Alice Outbreaks and welcome back yet again to Trionic 7. We are once again back in NS 2006 Sub 95 Vector Biopower. And today it's time to fix the horn. But wait, you might say, didn't you just fix the horn on this car? Yes I did, but the problem is back in a completely different way. Let me show you. You see, I pressed the horn switch a number of times, it didn't register until maybe the fourth or the fifth time. What can also happen is that if I press the volume down, it actually increases the volume. If I press volume up, it changes the source, and the buttons sort of get different meanings than they actually have. Now, in order to find the issue, we need to go to the lowest common denominator of all these problems. You see, there's no single wire going to the horn, the button here, button here, and button here. It's actually one wire for all of these. And depending on the button you click, it's a different resistance that is switched. So the SID senses which resistance is on the wire and does the according action. For instance, the horn is coded as short circuiting this circuit. The other buttons have specific resistances in a number of ohms. So for the weekend, I'm very fortunate to have access to one of these Tech 2 instruments. Thank you very much, Victor, for lending me your tool. This tool is very useful for diagnosing, for programming, and for changing settings in your sob. It can do almost anything, and this is the official tool that Saab uses to work on the cars. So what I'll do now is to power it on, and go into the process of seeing the values of the steering wheel buttons displayed on the screen. We'll go to Diagnostics, we select the model year, 2006, Saab 95, we go to Body, and we go to SID, the Saab Information Display, because that is what handles these buttons. It will then establish communications. Of course, I've connected the Tech2 to, to the diagnostic port under the steering wheel using this candy box, which is required for Saab's new within 2006. It takes a few seconds to start communications, and then we go to read values. For instance, we see the steering wheel control. It currently says 4.5 volts, and that is the voltage that the SID is measuring over the two wires going to the steering wheel. So let's see what happens when I press the horn button. Since the horn switch short circuits the wire, it should display as zero volts, since there's zero voltage across a short circuited circuit. Okay, let's press it in. I've actually removed the horn relay so that we can see if the horn is working here, but it doesn't give a sound, so I don't turn my neighbors mad or something. So I push it down, and it says 0 0.47 volts, 0 0.5 volts. And you know what the car thinks I'm doing? It thinks I'm pressing the Centronic Up button. And what is Centronic Up? Well, if this were an automatic car, and it's not, then it would have paddles up here, up and down for the automatic gearbox. This car, even though it's a manual, thinks I'm switching gears on the automatic gearbox. Go home, Saab, you're drunk. If we look closely, it will switch back and forth between Centronic Up and Horn, depending on the exact voltage level we have. But this is typical for an electrical issue. The voltage is just above the value it registers as the Horn, and just below the value for the Centronic Up. So it goes back and forth. Now, what could be the issue at hand? Well, we have to go in and look at it, but my suspicion is that it's this clock spring. You know, a steering wheel needs to be able to rotate and still have all these wires to the wheel, and therefore we have this spring that allows it to turn, but also has wires going through it. And this is something that can go bad over time. So, to get to the clock spring, we will have to remove the airbag, and then remove the steering wheel itself, and then the clock spring is behind here. Now, a pitfall here is that the clock spring doesn't seem to be available new anymore. I've looked around quite a bit, and I couldn't find this part anywhere. It says, no longer manufactured, which is a bit of a bummer. This part has part number 5200894, and this is for, I think, 2003 to 2008. For the Saab 95. But you should double check before you order this part to make sure it fits your car. The newer Saab 95 has another model, and for this one you also need a new wiring harness. I think it's this part. For instance, my 2009 95 sedan, the Phoenix, is probably having one of these newer clock springs. I don't know what the quality is compared to this older model here, but in the parts catalog it says to replace the older model with that newer model if a replacement is needed, and therefore also replace the wiring harness. Alright, a lot of talking, I think it's time to get to it. As we will be dealing with the airbag, we need to take a lot of safety precautions. 
These airbags, as you know, can be lethal if they're handled the wrong way. We essentially have the same chemical energy here as in a hand grenade. So first I'll go and remove the battery, the negative side first, then the positive. Then I'll wait two or three minutes just to be extra sure all the energy has been drained. Okay, five minutes later we've drained all the energy from the system. I've made sure that the wheels are straight and I've then turned the wheel about 45 to 90 degrees to one side. Depending on the model of your car, the airbag removal procedure will be slightly different. On this 2006 to 2010 model, you can now feel a small hole in the rear of the steering wheel. This is where we'll insert a small screwdriver to remove a spring clip. On the older 9.5s you might have a cap on the side that you remove and have a similar type of clip behind it, but I'm not really sure. We'll also move the steering wheel as far back up as we can. This to make access to these small holes easier. Okay, I've done one side now. It appears to be easier to do it below the steering wheel than above. And there's a small spring clip that you move towards the inside of the steering wheel. And then you can pop that side off. I'm now going to turn the wheel around and do the same thing to the other side. It requires a bit of muscle when you don't have the power steering enabled. Again, we locate that little spring hole. And then you pull on that spring. It does require a considerable bit of force. It's now completely loose and I will turn the wheel carefully back. For some reason the right side was harder to remove, but I found that you need to take the spring and carefully move it all the way to the side, to the middle, and then you can carefully pull on this middle airbag. There's two connectors that almost have no play in them, and if you were to pull it out straight you might damage them. I'm taking a small screwdriver and I notice these two yellow prying tabs. And I carefully pop them both out. That seems to be the right way forward. There we go. Then I carefully pull them out one at a time. These newer models of the Saab 95 have two stage airbags in the steering wheel. And this means that there are two electrical connectors to remove. All right, here is the loose airbag. I've actually never done the steering wheel before and I've never even touched an airbag before, so this is a bit of a new experience for me. I can read here that the airbag is made by Takeda Petri Sachsen Germany. And this actually has me slightly worried. I thought that this car for the Swedish market had an airbag made by Autoliv, a Swedish company. Takeda, as you know, has a major airbag recall lately. Apparently these airbags and it, this is not just for Saab, this is for basically any Takeda airbag in the last, I think, decade or two. Apparently they have problems with these being damaged and then causing problems in the collision, apparently killing the drivers. I have to check some more to see if this airbag is covered by the recall or not. Surprising, I really thought there was going to be an Autoliv airbag here. Now remember to store the airbag in a safe location while we do the rest of the steering wheel. Don't drop it and don't let it be exposed to moisture. Okay, so with the airbag out, we will now be removing the steering wheel. In the center here, there is a 22 millimeter nut. So I will grab my 22 millimeter socket and loosen it just a few turns. This is so that we can loosen the steering wheel from the steering column without removing the steering wheel entirely. Then when the steering wheel is loose and has play in it, we can then remove the contacts here from the clock spring. Okay, I'm not really sure the amount of torque needed to remove the nut. So I'm just going to use the biggest extension I have right on. Carefully move the electrical cables away and then securely fasten the nut. Make sure that the steering wheel is straight at this point and that the wheels are pointing straight ahead. And now, without damaging the connectors, I'll pull on the nut. Right, the nut is loose and I will switch to my smaller ratcheting handle. Okay, that's good, just a few turns and I will now pull on the steering wheel. Alright, a few love taps and now the steering wheel is loose enough to get play on the steering column. I now fully remove the nut, put it to the side. And now carefully remove the steering wheel 
far enough so that I can see the connector and then unplug it from the clock spring. Kind of clever actually not to remove the nut fully so that we pull hard. I mean this can be stuck on the column but we don't tug on these connectors. Now I can bring in closer to show you the springs we pulled on to remove the airbag. Here and here and you push them to the inside. They can be quite tough so you need to use a bit of force actually. Surprising amount. You don't just want to go with a screwdriver and just bang on the inside or something and might destroy like the airbag or some connector. You have to be gentle yet firm. So steering wheel out. You notice we have the nice vector steering wheel with these nurdles on the end here. Phoenix, the red car, has a metal-like insert. It's actually plastic on the side here. That's the arrow wheel. I think that one feels really nice, though a bit harder. This is more supple and soft since it has the perforated leather on the side. I think Saab makes great steering wheels and great seats. Because the steering wheel is straight and the wheels were straight, we can see that the key here of the steering column is upright. What we'll do now is to remove these two Torx bolts and there's another Torx bolt down here to gain access to the clock spring itself. T25 Torx. One bolt. Two bolts. And a third down here in the middle. Now we should be able to separate the plastic halves. That's easy. We can now see the control stacks here on the side. And I think we can just remove the two remaining bolts on the clock spring itself now. And the last one. So apparently the workshop manual tells me to remove the windshield wiper stack on the side there. And I push a white little spring on top. And I guess that's it. Oh, one on the bottom too. Click and it carefully glides out. I think it's okay if it hangs loose on the side. Now wait, I'll actually remove the connectors too to gain better access. There seems to be two connectors, one with this typical Saab connector thingy, where you remove the red tab, pull it out, and then there's another connector here, carefully push the pin in from the side, and the wiper stack comes right out. Now there's a whole bunch of wires here under the steering wheel and we'll need to remove those connectors going to the clock spring. Okay, so it's apparently held in by some Velcro. I pulled out one of the connectors and now I can see I need the small screwdriver to remove the little spring, push it in and just pull the connector out. All right, well that took way too long. Apparently there's two stages to it. First, there is a small switch here on the top of the yellow connector. You push it to the side and then you can push the connector further in. Then it releases from a sort of clip and the connector is loose and then you can turn it upside down and remove this spring and then we'll separate the connector. So first, loosen the connector from its holder, then release the connector from the other side. And here is the clock spring. Now, here is something interesting that I just found. The clock spring I just removed has been replaced before. This is a newer model from 2009 to 2010. Part number 12779964, which also requires the new wiring harness, which is currently on the steering wheel. All right, so I've decided to go ahead with the replacement anyway, and maybe we'll have to replace that wiring harness when we put back the steering wheel. So we need to make sure it's in the middle position before we put it back in. Otherwise, of course, when we turn the wheel, we'll just mash this and destroy it. The clock spring says, warning, before assembly, align front wheel straight. We've done that. And ensure the contact unit is in the central position. So we turn this all the way to the right, and then we turn it two turns back, and that's the middle position. Here is how it's done. It can be hard to turn the clock spring when the connector is out. If you find this difficult, put the connector back in, and this red tab will lift out by itself. But you just turn it all the way to the right until it stops and it should, should stop just after the central point and it stops almost here at two o'clock. Turn it back to the top position and then two turns back. This is now the central position and we can verify it by turning it once and then twice to the left before it stops. 
This means we have two full turns to the left and two full turns of the right of the steering wheel before this one stops. So, installation is just the reverse of removal, right? Don't worry, I'll guide you along all the steps I do to put it back in. Next, do the connectors. First, the big yellow connector. Push together. And the slim black connector. And then you find the rail that the yellow connector was fastened to and slide it on. Remember, you connect it first and then you pull the connector in and then slide it onto the rail outwards. Next, the windshield wiper stack. As with most modern cars, all these cables are coded so that they can't make anything wrong in the factory. This also means it's impossible for you to put the wrong connector in the wrong place. Stack slides right in. You can really tell this is made for fast assembly. This assembly is always much more difficult. Now I'm going to double check it once again to make sure that the clock spring is in the right position. I put the connector in to make the spring easier to turn. One two turns to the right and then it stops just after one two turns center position and then one two turns to the left and it stops right after so one two center position done i again remove the yellow connector and now the clock spring is locked Okay, time to put the steering wheel back on. The clock spring that we're putting back in is of the older type, and the one that was before was the newer type. According to the parts catalog, when you replace the old one with a new one, you have to put in a new wiring harness in the steering wheel. Unfortunately, the manual doesn't tell you how to replace this wiring harness, but after a bit of thinking, I found out that this newer harness is backwards compatible with the old clock spring, at least physically. But we seem to be in luck as the wiring harness connects, so I guess it's just uh, putting everything back together. I have also been measuring with a multimeter to make sure that the steering wheel buttons work and that we get the correct resistances out here to the connector. This is done by turning the connector around and measuring on the two central points here. I set the multimeter to resistance measurement to 200 or 2000 ohms and then just begin measuring over these two pins and then pushing on the different buttons. I'll show you a list of the resistances here. For instance, volume down is around 75 ohms and volume up is somewhere like 140, if I'm not mistaken. So go through all the buttons and make sure you have the correct resistances. Also importantly, make sure there's no connection when you don't press any button. And when you push this horn switch in, make sure it gets down to almost zero ohms. But please remember that making a resistance measurement means sending in a current into the circuit. So never attempt a resistance measurement when you have an airbag connected, because that can detonate the airbag and possibly kill you. And that would, wouldn't be too fun, now would it? So without the airbag you can do the measurements. Okay, so we're almost done for putting the wheel back on. Don't forget to put the plastic halves back together first. I'm putting on the lower one first. And these two holes need to fit, you fit the stack holes and then the hole for the screw lines up. This is also a great time to do some cleaning. So you can take your microfiber cloth and go over the steering wheel column and remove all the dirt and dust you might have laying around. Also a good time to clean the steering wheel. You guys want me to do a video on cleaning the steering wheels? Tell me down in the comments. Right, now things become delicate again. Make extra sure the clock spring is in the middle position as we just showed. Make sure that this connector is facing the right direction and there's no snagging on the cables. And now we put them closer together and sort of simultaneously attach the connector which goes in with a click and then carefully while pulling on the cables to loosen any slack, fit the steering wheel onto the column. And make sure you get it in the right position. It should be keyed, so there's no way of putting it on in the wrong position, I think. All right, now we put on the nut. And the nut is to be tightened to 39 newton meters. 
I'm gonna use my torque wrench. There we go. Make sure the steering wheel is as far forward as you can push it. Make sure everything feels tight. The wires go free. And then put the airbag back in. Connectors are keyed. Yellow goes to yellow. And then carefully fit it back into its connectors. And it will just snap straight in. Okay, so I've put the airbag back on, but I'm not really getting the right side fully in. I will do this later off camera to make sure everything is right, but maybe this is related to why it was so difficult to remove the right side too with the springs there. So I'll go back out and put the battery back in, turn the ignition on and then connect the Tech 2 instrument again and read the voltages and see if we have a difference. Start the ignition. This is when I hope we don't have an airbag explosion. Okay, we have the airbag light on. I will have to check the trouble codes with the Tech 2. Again, we go to diagnostics. 2006 Saab 95. Body. SID. Read values. Okay, steering wheel control. What happens if I press the horn button? It goes to 0.22 volts. Every time it has the same voltage. But now we have horn every single time and that makes me think we got this to work. Now what if I press the other steering wheel buttons? Let's go through them one at a time. Volume down. Good. Stable voltage. Volume up. Stable voltage. Next. All these buttons seem to register correctly. You know what? I think we fixed it. And remember, the only reason we're not actually here on the horn is because I pulled the horn relay. So we can see the horn button being pushed, but we don't make the neighbors crazy. All right, so what about that airbag light? We go back out. And then we go to the airbag system. We go to diagnostic trouble codes, read DTC information. And here it says driver frontal deployment circuit resistance low for both stage one and stage two. So there's obviously something it's detecting here in the steering wheel. Maybe that's just transient from when we disconnected everything. So I'll try to clear it. We clear all the diagnostic trouble codes. And now we can see that the airbag light is off. No, it's back on once again. Okay, we read. So the code wasn't clear. There's still a code there. Oh, I think the Tech 2 crashed. All right, so we have a problem with the airbag light on now. Let's see what can cause this. So let's talk quickly about that airbag light once again. And you might be asking, hey, Jonathan, why not wearing sunglasses anymore? Why is it so dark outside? Has it been a long time since I shot the last video? Yeah, it's been many, many hours. In fact, I've taken this apart maybe five, six, seven times, and I've learned new things every time I did it. So the airbag is a very strange system compared to other electrical systems on the Saab. And I understand it. It's a very paranoid system. Any fault is made to be as safe as possible and to prevent accidents or airbags from exploding prematurely. And this is not just for Saabs. This is for any car brand. They all do the same thing just to be safe. So this low resistance problem that we got, we measured it with the Tech 2 and saw that it was short circuited. But airbag connectors short circuit themselves when they're not properly connected. It's hard to show on video, but inside this yellow connector that is connected to the wiring harness in the car, behind the steering wheel, there is a short circuiting mechanism which engages when the connector is pulled out. You see, I tried to use my ohm meter to measure the clock spring itself. Remember, only do this when the clock spring is loose and not connected to any airbag or to the car. And I was very confused to see that all pins were shorted. And then it dawned upon me that when it's not connected, it's going to short out. And it's also the same thing with this connector and also the connector from the steering wheel. All of these have internal short circuiting bars that close the circuit when there's nothing connected to it. And this clock spring I'm holding in my hand now is actually the one we bought from Victor. So I actually put everything back together with the same clock spring as before. 
So what difference have I made today? Well, actually the horn and the steer wheel buttons seem to work. I guess that me taking it apart and looking at every single connector sort of made the connection work again. Maybe there was some kind of dirt or corrosion inside the cables. I, I couldn't find any, but maybe there was some. So we are back with the same system again. Basically, I thought that the two systems were going to be compatible. And while we could get the connectors to fit, they were slightly different. And the newer wiring in the steering wheel short circuited when it didn't feel the newer type connector. This is the older type. So that's why it didn't work. You can't use the old clock spring with a newer wiring harness. And you can't use a new wiring harness with the older clock spring and vice versa. And that's why we had the airbag light. So it's been a very long day, as you can imagine, but we got everything together. The horn works great. The steering wheel buttons work great. Everything is just as it should be. So even though this was tedious, you know, a day without learning something is a day lost, in my opinion. And it was also worthwhile because we can also make a video, put it up on the channel and show you guys how to replace the clock spring in your Saab 95. This video, of course, also shows you how to remove the airbag, how to remove the steering wheel. This can be very useful if you're looking for this information. You know, it's always my intention to make good and useful videos, and I really hope this was one of them. So thank you very much for watching this video from Trionic 7. Subscribe to us here on YouTube or check out our social media. We have Facebook, Google+, Reddit, Twitter and Instagram, all that usual stuff. And I'll see you in the next Saab video. Bye for now.